All right, shalom to all the viewers out there. I'm Brother Yerushalayim, your host for The Bible Unlocked. And today we're going to be getting into a mystery. Well, it's not really a mystery, but to those that don't are not that well read in the Bible or that come from a Christian background, it's going to be kind of a mystery to you on who created evil. The topic is who created evil. A lot of people have their own philosophy on how evil got here. But today we're going to delve into the Bible and find out how what God says or who God says is responsible for creating evil. Because the Bible is clear on who created evil. It's, it's, it's not debatable on who created evil in the Bible. So that's the, what you're going to get the understanding on today. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to rock some boats. A lot of people are going to be a little um, uncomfortable after seeing this message. Because it's going to be a surprise to a lot of you on how evil got here. And who's responsible for the evil acts going on out here on the, on the, on the earth. So with that being said, you need to sit back and push your emotions to the side. We're going to deal with this topic on a scholastic level. We're going to go into the Bible and we're going to deal with it for what it says. So you need to put your emotions and take them off of the forefront. And then you got to just open up your mind so you can get the understanding on what you're about to receive. Amos chapter three, verse six. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? See, the prophet Amos is asking a question. It's the topic of discussion. He says, shall there be evil done in a city and the most high God is not responsible for doing it? It's a rhetorical question, but God actually actually answers this question himself. Isaiah 45 verse 7. I form the light. God says he's the one who forms the light. When you see the sun go up in the morning, God is the one who does that and create darkness and he create darkness. So when the sun goes down, God is the one responsible for allowing the darkness to happen. I make peace and God makes peace. When it's peace in your household, when it's peace between countries, God is the one responsible for doing that and create evil. God says he does what? and create evil wait i needed i didn't think i understood that god says he does what and create evil i the lord do all these things and just in case you didn't understand god wrote his signature on the bottom of it he says i the lord do all these things not satan not anybody else god says i'm the one responsible for doing all these things i am the great i am Nobody else gets the, the, the glory behind doing it. I'm the one who does it. He's telling you straight out so you don't have to get, you don't have, there's no misunderstanding, there's no miscommunication. God is telling you straight up front, I'm the one who does this. When you see people getting killed in the streets, I'm the one who does this. When you see people getting murdered, I'm the one who does this. When you see wars going on around, I'm the one who does this. First Samuel 2 verse 6. The Lord killeth. See, God is telling you he's the one who does the killing. He's the one who kills. It's without a shadow of a doubt. God is telling you the Lord killeth. He's telling you I kill and maketh alive. And God will bring you back to life. Like when just some people in the hospital when they done got shot 20 times. God is the one who allows them to stay alive. Yeah, the doctors do the surgery, but God is the one who gives the ultimate decision on if this man can stay alive or not. It has nothing, it has, the doctors play their role, but God is the one who says, spirit stay there or spirit come up. He bringeth down to the grave. Yep, like God will bring you right down to the grave. You say, nope, I don't want him living anymore. I want his soul to come down to the grave and bring it up and he bring you right back up. People that have had heart attacks, people that have been pronounced dead and all of a sudden, uh, two days later, are coming out of a coma and all that, God is the one who says, you know, it's not your time to go yet. I don't want him to die yet. The Lord maketh poor. God is the one who made the nation of Israel poor, like the so-called Negroes and Hispanics that are in the ghettos. God is the one who did that to you because you didn't want to keep his commandments. God puts you in the projects, in the third ward projects and in the slums. He's the one who puts you in these places. With, on welfare and all that. God put you there because you didn't want to listen and obey. 
He says he's responsible for doing it and maketh rich. And God is the one who made all the Gentiles rich. He put them above the nation of Israel. He gave them the riches and the glory of the planet Earth for this moment of time. God is the one who did that. He gave the so-called Europeans the right to rule right now the Earth. He gave them that power. It's all in his hands. He's in control of everything going on. He's the one moving everyone on the chessboard. He's moving all the figures around. Exodus 12 verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Do you remember the Passover? God came through and he killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. God is the one who did that. God is the one responsible for doing that. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. God killed the one, God killed the son of the Pharaoh, the highest ranking man, and he killed the firstborn to the ones that was in the dungeons, in prison basically. He killed their firstborn as well too. He didn't discriminate between the high class and the low class, because God is not a respective person when it comes to judgment. It doesn't matter how high lifted up you are or how low you are. If he's gonna come through and he says he's gonna kill all the firstborn, everybody has to die. And all the firstborn of cattle. Imagine that. What did the cattle do wrong? You have to ask yourself, why did he kill the firstborn of the cattle? He slaughtered all the humans. Okay, we can understand that. They wouldn't, the Egyptians wouldn't let the children of Israel go. But the, why did the cattle have to die? Because God does not play any games. God is on, when he goes on a slaughtering spree, he's killing everything. He doesn't play any games. Psalm 78 verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. See, God is not the one that physically goes out with a sword and start slicing people up. That's not the way it works. God is sitting on his throne and he's controlling both sides. He's controlling the left-hand side, which is headed by Satan or uh, the Beelzebub. And he's controlling the right-hand side, which is uh, headed by Yahweh or who you call Jesus Christ. God is in the middle. God controls both sides. He's sending the evil angels to go out and do his work. So when it says that God went a God killed the firstborn of Egypt, or when God does any of the killing, God is not the one who comes down and does it himself. He sends the evil angels to go and do his bidding. 1 Samuel 16 and verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. See, Saul had a righteous spirit at first. He had a spirit of the Most High. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The Most High took that spirit from him and replaced it with an evil spirit had him trying to kill King David. When David wasn't, well, he wasn't king at the time, but trying to kill David, his servant. And David wasn't doing anything to him, but an evil spirit from God troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. See, they knew that the spirit came from God, not from Satan or not from anyone else. God gave the commandment to Satan to go and inhabit Saul. And that's what happens to a lot of people. You got people walking around as murderers and killers. God gave Satan the permission to go inhabit you. You got people walking around waking up and killing a whole family. God gave Satan the permission to go inhabit you. You got people waking up and kidnapping kids. God gave Satan the permission to go inhabit these people. That's the way it works. Satan can't get up and go by himself. Satan has to get permission from God. If he doesn't get permission from God, it's not happening. It's not happening. Satan can't just wake up one day and say, you know, I'm going to go do my own thing. Satan ain't rebelling. Satan cannot rebel. Satan is already on the evil side. In order for Satan to rebel, Satan would have to come to the righteous side. Satan is already sent out to do evil. He cannot rebel against God. He's already evil. But when God needs to do something evil, Satan, go do your job.
That's the way it works. It doesn't work any other way. First Kings 22 and verse 20. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? God wanted Ahab to go up and fight at Ramoth Gilead because God was going to kill him there. That's where Ahab was going to meet his final destination. And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there were spirits up there giving suggestions on how they were going to get Ahab to go up and fight. So one was saying this, and there was another spirit saying that. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Then there came another spirit that came before God and said, you know what? I have a plan. This is what I'm going to do. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And God says, he said, what's your plan? Let me know what's up. Let me know what you got in store. And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. The spirit says, I'm going to go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets because the prophets were given um, Ahab counsel. He asked the prophets if he should go up and fight. So the, the spirit says, I'm going to go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets so they can get a lying counsel from, from the prophets. So Ahab can get a lying counsel from the prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. And God says, yep, you know what? That's going to work. I like that idea. That is going to work. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. And God is the one, even though the spirit said he was going to go do it, God is the one who got the credit for it. It says God is because God gave him the permission to go do it. So the credit actually automatically or uh, it, it automatically goes back to God. He's the one who gets the credit for it. Even though that spirit is the one that came up with the idea and actually went forth to do it. It's no different from in a military. You have the general who sits his he, he sits behind in the office now, the high general and, the, pre, and the, the president. We'll say the president. The president sits back and signs papers and he authorizes things to happen. He authorizes wars to happen, troops to go here, troops to go there. Who's the, is he out there the one doing it? The president is not doing nothing. He's just authorizing it. But when things are successful, who gets the credit for it? The president does. Who gets the credit for it? The president does, even though he didn't go out and shoot a gun. That's the same way it works with God. God is the ultimate president and he's getting the credit for all of it. He's pointing people to go this way, that way. Go do this work. Go do that work. And God's the one who gets the credit for, the credit for it. Psalms 66 verse 5. Come and see the works of God. King David is telling you, to, he says, slow down real quick. Put everything up to the side, sit back. And he says, come and see the works of God. Come see some of the things that God does. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He's terrible in his doings. When God uh, sent the nuclear bomb over there to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, he is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. The World Trade Center, he is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. Trayvon Martin, he is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. Eric Garner, he is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. The politically motivated concentration camp over there in Germany with the fake Jews, he is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. God is terrible in the things that he does to the children of men and people don't even consider it. God is responsible for doing all these atrocities out here. When the suicide bombers come, God is responsible for doing it. God is responsible for doing it. All these wars being stirred up, God is responsible for doing it. God is responsible for doing it. And it only makes sense. It only makes sense. You cannot have a God that's all good. And then you got all this evil going on in earth. It makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. When I started reading and understanding and being taught these verses, I didn't fight against the scriptures. 
I never fought against the scriptures. What I did is sat back and I said, you know what? This makes sense. This makes sense. I could never grasp the concept of God is all good or God is all love. I could not grasp that. It, it never made sense to me. I said, if God is all good, how do we have all these killings going on out here? And people always try to philosophize and say, well, it's a result of people not serving God. No, it's not. Or God just let us do whatever we want and we're the ones doing it. No, God is stirring up the spirits and putting it in people and having, he's the one who's responsible for it. He's allowing it to happen. He's controlling both sides. He says he creates evil. And it only makes sense. It only makes sense. If God was all good, you would expect the earth to reflect that. You would, you would expect the earth to reflect an all good God. If God was all only evil, you would expect the earth to reflect that and to be all evil. But the earth has a balance. It has a balance of good and a balance of evil. The same balance you see in everything out in life. You have people that are tall. You have people that are short. Fat, thin, it's a balance everywhere you go. Dark, light, it's a balance. It only makes sense to have good and evil. Malachi 3 verse 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. See, and a lot of people are gonna wanna say that, well, that was God in the Old Testament. That's what he did back then, but there's a new God in the New Testament. That's absolutely false. God says he does not change. God was responsible for killing people back then, and it's the same thing today. And nothing has changed. It's the same exact thing. He's the same exact uh, entity. The same back then and the same today. The churches is what's, who has changed God. They're the ones who said, you know what, we're not going to accept God created evil. We're going to say God is all good. The churches are the ones that have blocked you from understanding this from getting this understanding, the correct understanding of God. The Christian God is not the same God that's in the Bible. That God is all good, like the Christians want to say it, because that's not the same God that's in the Bible. That's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's a Gentile God, the God of Christianity. And when I say Christianity, I'm talking about post-Constantine Christianity, where they started taking the books and mixing it with paganism and taking certain verses out and saying, you know what, we're going to pick these verses and we're going to make a God out of them. Because that's essentially what Christianity does. They take a few verses out and then they say, well, this is what we want God to be like. Instead of he says he comes in the volume of the book. You got to take the good and the bad. So that God of Christianity is not the same. They have changed that and they have made it fit their needs and what they think a God should be like. But that's not the God of the Bible. He's totally different from that. And if you don't, uh, if you don't want to accept that, then that's fine. But God has just to show you that God does create evil. He has one last slaughter getting ready to come up. It's going to be the biggest slaughter out there. It's going to be bigger than the, the flood slaughter. It's going to be bigger than the Egyptian firstborn getting slaughtered. It's going to be the biggest slaughter getting ready to come up when the seventh seal was broken. Just in case you didn't know that God created evil. Revelation 9 verse 15, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. See, this is the seventh seal being broken. The last seal, and it's the fifth trumpet in that seal being blown. And it's gonna happen on a specific time a specific month, it's gonna happen on a specific year, a specific month, a specific day, and a specific hour. God has it already written in his book. He has it already written down. And he's gonna loose these angels to come out and they're gonna kill one third of mankind. To show you that God ain't playing games. God is not playing games. And the, he's gonna kill one third of men. And the people that stuck in the doctrine that God is all good, they're not gonna know what hit, they're not gonna know what hit them. They're gonna be looking around crazy. 
You know how many people one third of men is? There's, if this were to happen today, there's seven billion people on earth. That would be around 2.5 billion people wiped off the, place, the, the face of the earth in one day and in one hour. A specific hour is gonna take place. That's all China wiped out, all China knocked out. That's all America wiped off the face of the earth. That's all Brazil wiped off the face of the earth. That's all Indonesia wiped off the face of the earth. And all Russia. God is planning to slay one third, so that would be equivalent to all those countries being knocked off the place, the face of the earth in one day and in one hour. God is not playing any games. So who's going to get the brunt of that? The people that's not keeping God's commandments. You get caught up in Christianity on that hour, all I can say is hasta la vista. If you get caught up in Islam in that hour, hasta la vista. The only way that's going to keep you safe from that last evil destruction that God is getting ready to bring is if you are keeping God's commandments. It's the only way you're going to get, be safe. He's going to reserve you to the side, the ones that are actually obeying his word. He's going to reserve you and none of the destruction is going to hit you. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. See, the commandments are just going to keep you safe. God's telling you, he gives you the instructions all throughout the Bible. Keep his commandments and you're going to stay alive. You're not going to be put to death. You're not going to touch the lake of fire. Keep his commandments. This is what he's asking you to do. He's not asking you to go to church on Sunday and give him all your tithes. That's not what he's asking you to do. He's not asking you to jump up and hoop and holler and tell you people how much you love God. He's not asking for any of that. He's asking you to keep his commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye that's what's going to keep you alive in these last days during this last great slaughter that god has that's what's going to keep you alive what's one of the commandments leviticus 19 verse 26 ye shall not eat Anything with the blood. God says not to eat anything that has blood in it. This is a commandment you must be keeping. I know there's a lot of Europeans or so-called Caucasians that like to eat their meat raw. The children of Israel are not supposed to be doing that. You cannot be eating your meat with the blood in it. That's an abomination. God will kill you for doing that. Absolutely. Neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. And you're not supposed to be using enchantment. You're not supposed to be doing anything with witchcraft, sorcery. You're not supposed to be doing any of that. Ouija boards, you're not supposed to be doing it. Or observing times. You're not supposed to be trying to find out what your sign, zodiac sign is and what, what does that mean if you're a Virgo or a Leo. You're not supposed to be doing that. That's an abomination. God will kill you for doing that. Absolutely. So God is the one responsible for creating evil. He sends out Satan to do the evil, but God is the one who authorizes it. That's what it's saying. That's what God is saying. He authorizes the evil to happen. Nothing happens unless God says it's okay. So with that being said, I'm going to say Shalom and peace and blessings to the nation of Israel, those that come back and keep God's commandments in these last days as commanded. If you want to be saved from the evil and the wrath that God is getting ready to bring on this earth, you see it every day. You see God's wrath and his evil every single day. The, the, the evil that God allows Satan to go out and do, you see it every day. You hear about it on the news. You see it in all walks of life. So in order to be safe and protected from that, you must be keeping God's commandment. The commandments are a force field to prevent you from all harm. That's the key. That's the key. You must understand that. You must understand that. You have to get your mind out of the Christian 
uh, concept of God because that is going to kill you. You're going to get killed in that concept. That is that was put in place to keep your mind enslaved. That had you you put God in a box by saying he's all good. He's in a one specific box and you don't know you don't even understand what he's capable of doing. That's why most people don't fear God because if they understood that God is the one who's the who authorizes the evil, you would be doing what he said. You would be doing exactly what he said. So with that I say shalom until next time and peace and blessings. Shalom, this is Brother Yerushalam asking the viewers to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the videos so that the word can be spread throughout the four corners of the earth as prophesied. And with that, I say shalom and peace and blessings to the nation of Israel.